my name is Hero Time 1000. I'm the guy who is in development of the Underworld's cello, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 89. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Charlie. Hi, Norman. Hey, Charlie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Fine. Um, today has been a really interesting day for me. Oh, how so? Um, nothing special happened. Played a bit of Pokemon and got a nice nap before the show. Ah, so that's the most interesting that happened today for you. Very good. <laughs> well, I caught a bunch of Pokemons, but that's not really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the new XY, right? Yep, yep. Oh. Uh, if anybody out there who has a 3DS, they should go get it. It's really fun. So anyway, joining us today is James Cork. Hello there, Norman. Hi there, Charlie. Hey, hi. Hey, James. How are you doing, man? Doing okay, actually, uh, considering uh, all these commissions are not going to draw themselves. So if I suddenly fall silent, that's, oh no, James got himself wrapped into another picture. Oh my, it's always like that, isn't it? it it's always like that, but hey, when you get that, fi- that fat ca- b- amount of cash presented to you on your PayPal account, you are like, oh yeah, that's why I'm doing it for. Yeah, it's true. It's all in for the money. Sadly, nowadays it has to be like that. Stupid oh. procession. Oh, true that, true that. But anyway, also joining us is Lionheart Cartoon. Hey there, guys. Hey there, Ryan. How are you doing, man? Pretty good. Had time to wake up, coffee's in, everything's all right. Breakfast yet? Yep. Uh, right here, that's awesome, that's awesome. So, any new projects working on? Because the past few drawings that you did, they were awesome. Well, that's still part of a project. It's, uh, well, I did what I wanted to do with it. But I might push it further, uh, try to keep very busy, and I might do a tutorial on those, but Ooh. that's uh, that's further down the line. So, well, I- I'm going to take it slow and one thing at a time, just to make sure they're done right. All righty then, I can't wait. I- I'll be there to either comment or nag. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good philosophy of work. I, I support that. <laughs> Thank one you. One by one. So anyway, our guest for this week is Hero of Time. Hello. Hey there, Hero. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fine. Still a little groggy, but I'll I'll say whatever you want me to say, buddy. <laughs> See, this show is the best show ever. <laughs> this show, everyone's best show so ever. comfortable. Yeah, I'm selling out. What of it? <laughs> yeah. Good, good to know, man. So sorry for the super early wake time because early is not best show material, but hey, at least we get the show done right. I hope mm-hmm. so. Doesn't matter. I'm totally fine with it. I'm 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 just happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. So anyway Hero, how are you doing man? I'm doing just fine. I've been burning my candle at both ends, just uh working on many stuff. I've got a lot of juggling to do between school and my own project and whatnot, so I've been up nights but I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, it's understandable. Uh, we all do that sometimes. So anyway, before we start the show, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? My favorite character, uh, officially from the show, will always be Princess Luna. I'm oh sorry. She was my she was my first character to mess around with when I started with uh, Adventure Gaming st- uh, Studios. Oh. I tried to make a, a, a game about her that eventually didn't go well. Oh, okay, understandable, understandable. L- Luna is everybody's favorite. Yes. Yeah, well, I can tell you a couple that don't like Luna, but yeah, I like Luna. <laughs> I, I like Luna as well. I, I feel like I'm one of a million, um, so I'm not that oh, yeah. special when it comes to favorite character. If you think about it, uh, there's billions and billions of stars in the sky, and each one of them are Luna's fan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Do you want to be that one in a million? Try to be a fan of Princess Cadence. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but that's yeah. difficult. Oh Shining Armor is my favorite character. No, I'm sorry. Wait, no, no. I take it back. King Sombra is my favorite character. <laughs> Plus Sentry and Twilight Sparkle is best OTP. Oh, no. Please, no. Gilda is best OTP. Shots fired. <laughs> wow. What have I done? But anyway, um, you know, what's your favorite episode? I really like them all, and I really want to say Luna Eclipse because that's Princess Luna. But obviously, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and break the ice here. I can't help but decide between Lesson Zero 
Oh, and God. went and went to wrap up because that was the first episode I saw that I fell in love with the show. Winter Wrap Up is a good one, and also Lesson Zero, because Lesson Zero is also my favourite, because, well, I am a big Fluttershy fan, and looking at Fluttershy snapping that bear's neck, ah, <laughs> words, <laughs> words are how to describe. Lesson Zero is an episode that, if you have been a student of anything, you know what it is to have a deadline and you're not meeting it, and you won't be able to present your, your project to your teacher. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, and my... My school has been all about deadlines, so I totally understand the stress and frustration. Um, good Not so much that I make everybody do what I want, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> but still, but still. And also, Winter Wrap Up. Winter Wrap Up has a nice song. It's the first big song in the whole, um, in season one, actually. So true, true. Introduction to songs. But, but it had a lot of humor to it, too. And when I saw how, how uh, you know, cartoony some of the moments were, when I saw it, I was like everyone else. I was like, this is a young kid show, right? And I was like, <laughs> and, and when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, I can see where everybody's coming from. I think we've all been through that path, right? It's the song that got us. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, our second question is related to, to that. So how did you become a fan of the show? Well, after I saw it, I eventually watched more. And as I watched more, I started to get more and more interest in then I tried to get my sister to watch it, and <laughs> she too was skeptical. How? Okay. By the way, how old is your sister? Because just for point of reference, she is one year younger than me. I am twenty five. She is twenty four. Okay, so no wonder she's skeptical because old people watching a show for kids. All right. Yeah, but we still watch cartoons occasionally, you know. So I thought it wouldn't be that. Hard to see if she would uh, get to watch it, but she watched it on her own, and now we're both pretty much avid fans. <laughs> Yay. That, that is one of those stories that I never hear much, because we always ask, oh, how do you become a fan of the show? Oh, I got this, I got that. And then it's rarely that I hear that I got someone involved in the very beginning just to know what they think. That is very rare. It's usually, I watch the show, now I must spread the news. I... <laughs> In fact, friends with the show. <laughs> oh, my my friend, uh, I'm just going to give a quick shout out. Josh, um, Josh Bernard, he <laughs> he jokes about it, really. I know that he, he doesn't care if I like it or not, but uh, he always gives this annoyed look whenever I, and I talk about it. And the sad thing is on YouTube, I, I preach that um, you it, whether you are a fan of the show or just don't like it, you shouldn't put it in people's faces, and yet I don't do what I preach, but I can get away with it because internet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> and funny, uh, funny enough, the fourth and last question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, first of all, my father and I had complications over it. He was okay with me uh, watching it, but when he found out that I was doing, you know, game work on it, what he basically said was, why aren't you making games that you can copyright and sell? Why are you bothering with your time with this? And it was like, eh, we, we had a bit of an argument on that one. And now he's accepting it because someone on uh, Derpy Burrow was able to convince him that in order to make a successful game market, I need to first have an audience. And my mother is okay with it. Uh, in fact, she supports it entirely. My stepfather is okay with it, and of course, her daughter is just chock full of <laughs> season 4 MLP stuff, so she watches it religiously. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. And your friends? My friends, of course, I told you about Josh. He's okay with it. He, he's, he totally supports what I'm doing and what I watch, but <laughs> I try to avoid uh, talking about it around him. Uh, understandable. And um, I have Steam friends. Will has been a big friend of mine who's a fan of the show as well. And, of course, my uh, girlfriend, Christina James, who is also a fan of the show. It's funny because she's a big Transformers, Lord of the Rings fan. So she's so she's into the geeky stuff. So she got into Pony very easily. Okay. Well, wow. Oh my God. L- lucky she's, for she's you. A, she's a fan of Transformers. Yes. I'm so sorry for the Michael Bay movies. You have no idea. <laughs> she likes huh? the Michael Bay movies. Oh, my. And I tried, oh. And I tried to... Uh, Convince her. No. 
I've said so many things about the uh, the third movie that, and she just doesn't want to hear it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I tried to like the first one. I tried so hard. It just wouldn't oh, sink I, in. I tried to watch the first Transformers, but I could not watch it without uh, riff tracks. <laughs> have you heard of <laughs> oh, that one? You know, here I will be honest with you. I, too, am a Transformers fan, and I, too, love the Transformers Michael Bay movies. But the third one has some really BS moments that just make me want to punch them. Even more so than usual. The third one has so much Yes, in it. Oh well, um, everybody has their likes and dislikes, and Transformers is one of them. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Hero, for answering our four basic questions. No problem. Let's move on to the next topic before we talk about Transformers even further. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next topic is news time, and in today's news time, Princess Luna plush too expensive for Funrise. A week ago, the Princess Pony plush started appearing in stores. The plushes that were available are Princess Celestia, Princess Cadence, and Princess Twilight Sparkle. The odd mare out was every pony's favorite princess, Princess Luna. The reason for this was, as stated by Funrise, our number one goal is to make sure we create toys that are not only well made, but affordable to as many of our fans as possible. To add the multiple colors to the body of Princess Luna would become quite costly and because of the ponies are part of an assortment that all share the same price, it would cause the cost of the other characters to increase as well. Pictures can be found in the show notes. So, guys, what do you think of this? Is it not fair? Okay, I think it's a theory. No, go on, go on with your theory. I think it's going to be the same as mine. I have the feeling for it, but but go for it. I think it's because they can't afford the color pink. Uh, I think that's the reason why they can't uh, uh, <laughs> release a dark-colored toy <laughs> like Princess Luna. When they said, we don't have enough colors, I thought to myself, oh, okay, because dark blue is not uh, one of your repertoires. Okay, mm. as long as it's not pink, it won't produce. <laughs> was, was I far off from your original theory? It's very similar, actually, because I, I think it's that. But also, it's kind of like a marketing ploy. Remember that this is, uh, this is, this brand, My Little Pony is ultimately for, uh, for little girls. Yeah, it's more, it, now it's getting more, uh, expand, like it, it's covering both boys and girls. We have the, uh, fan favorites that comes in a red and black package. And then we have yeah. Nightmare Moon, yeah. which is a black toy. But then look at the plushies. And all the plushies that you see, they're either white, pink, purple, orange, uh, blue with multicolor rainbow hair. But I don't see them you, uh, doing a toy that is ultimately black, uh, blue, dark blues. And that looks fairly similar to Nightmare Moon because I don't see it as marketable. Even the, even the Princess Luna toy is really light purple. Like, I know it because I am, I have one here right now and it doesn't look like Luna. It looks like Twilight with Luna's cutie yeah. mark. So I don't think it's marketable for them to do a, a dark colored, uh, uh, plushie. Or like the internet will say it, that's racist! <laughs> <laughs> it might not be marketable now, but you look at the evidence that we've seen Nightmare Moon, we've seen those fan favorite packs of darker color schemes. They are not common, but once they're out there, they actually sell quite well. It is marketable, but it's just not, um, how you say, they're not pushing it far enough actually at this point. Mm. They're just well, sitting it's... sitting on it, like a gold mine sitting on it, waiting for stuff to happen. Well, yeah. Yeah, gold mine, but they're, they're, they're fighting against a stereotype that's been going for more than half a, half a century. That, uh, hell, for, forever, because everyone knows that dark color characters are queens are, and they are evil, Queen Chrysalis, and that cute color characters are princesses and they're good. Uh, Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, Pri- no, Princess Celestia, Princess Twilight, and Princess Cadence. Mm. So when you have Princess Luna, which is dark color, people are going to think that she is evil because she is dark colored. They're fighting against the series that, that's been going forever. What about you, Lion? You haven't seen anything yet? Well, the show is is in, in its third season right now. So the fact that they're trying to push that as a reason for not having a Princess Luna seems to me to be, to be a bit a bunch of BS. <laughs> they probably had problems and they couldn't make it out or produce it in mm-hmm. a timely manner. And they just decided to not put it out at all. But anyone who's watched the show already, girls or not... And they figure that there's a part missing to all that collection. They're mm. probably missing out on that. It's like, oh, mom, I want all of the princesses. But 
oh, there's no Princess Luna. Okay, well, I'll just pick one. Mm. So, you know, you, you want to have the set. You can't have the set now because it's not produced. It's like when they had that pink Princess Celestia at oh, first. God. Dark colors or not, uh, it's still a part of the show. And anyone who watches the show knows she's not evil. Mm-hmm. And it's just as simple as that. Well, I have another reason for uh, for them not making or not being able to make Luna. Because when I read here, it's okay. They say that they don't want to go over budget with the colors. Because I think these ponies are made of felt. And maybe darker colors are a bit expensive. And if they do make Luna, well, they can make Luna, but Luna would be at a higher cost because of the material and the colors. And if they increase Luna by that much, they have to increase everyone else. Yeah. yeah but all ponies are made of different colors. That's just a weird reason for me. They're all different colors. Don't get into ponies if you can't afford colors. That doesn't make <laughs> sense. It's not colors. It's more of the material material for that color because if you think about it how many teddy bears or how many plush that we see out there are in a darker color from what i can see not that much um i can think of really? care bears that have darker colors like luna really a dark blue there's one that basically just sleeps all day i don't remember his name it's been way <laughs> too long but no, I mean, come on. Yeah, but he's All not of the Care Bears are different colors. If they have a dark color teddy uh, uh, Care Bear that looked, uh, looks like Luna, I'm totally watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> the purple is a color of evil as well, depending on which scheme you put it in. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but purple is also a sign of royalty, so it can either work. Dark blue as well. Yeah, so, but in that you case, mean, that mean means that blue Twilight... And silver or gold. <laughs> Yeah, but that means that we can take Twilight Sparkle now that she's a princess and say she has the potential to be evil. Mm-hmm. Nah. <laughs> nah, 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 I don't get some queen on her and she's going to be evil. Ah, that's right. You need to be a queen to be evil. That's what Disney has taught us and that's how they roll. Yeah, it, she's just okay. a princess. Nobody cares about princesses. Princesses <laughs> cannot be evil. <laughs> I mean, come on. Never seen, there has never been an evil princess. <laughs> oh, sure. But anyway, um, anyway, interesting as this is, we'll just have to wait and see because... I have a feeling that if Funrise releases Princess Luna, they might need to make another batch that soon. Yeah, it's going to sell out. <laughs> Indeed. So anyway, let's move on to the next news topic. And the next news topic is Daniel Ingram will say stuff in Season 4. If you don't know who Daniel Ingram is, he's the guy responsible for all the catchy songs in the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series and also the Little Pet Shop series. In a recent tweet, he stated that he will be doing a VA cameo in Season 4 of My Little Pony. What character did he voice? What role did he play? Well, as for now, it is unknown and it's still a mystery. Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, what do you think? And I'm going to go around the table this time because what I did there was chaos. So, Charlie, what do you think? Daniel Ingram in a voice uh, actor cameo. Hmm... I have a funny feeling it's going to be an incidental character or a background character where he says like one or two lines and Indeed. that's about it. But Indeed. I do not know if his actual OC will be there. If, no. if, if it's there, I think it's. I think that's crossing the line or something. Yeah. Do, doing so... Nah. I, I'm going to move on. So James, what do you think? I'm not going to say whether I like it or not. I'm just going to keep myself very neutral about this. I'm not even hyping for it. I'm just like, oh, that's cool. However, you have to consider how late he mentioned he was recording this with how uh, how long we have until the season starts. Something mm-hmm. tells me we are not going to see this cameo up until the season four finale. Or near there, near there. Mm-hmm. So what about you, Lion? Well, what James just said does make sense. But if I were to speculate, I'd have to wonder which character is his favorite. Maybe he was given a chance to voice his favorite character in there, just for a little quip. Because there are characters, uh, mostly background characters, who haven't talked that much. uh, Like that Doctor Who slash Time Turner Uh character. He doesn't talk that much, but he probably just was given the chance to do something. And something, oh my god, I was given that chance. And he decided to tweet about it. But, I mean, yeah, what James said, something closer to the end of the season, that's probably going to happen. But... I'm kind of happy for him. I mean, come on. You've been given the chance to not just make the music, but voice something on the show that you work on. Yay, so awesome. And what about you, Hero? 
Lion, I'm afraid you have given me the false hope for <laughs> Doctor Who singing in, oh. a, in a line. <laughs> Sorry, man, I really didn't want to. I, didn't I, I would imagine it, uh, him doing his best uh, northern accent <laughs> and <laughs> making it sing. Good Lord. Um, I do hope he's able to sing a few songs in his in his song alone, but <laughs> Well, from what I read from the tweet, it's just basically just came out from another epic MLP season four playback session. Dang, what a great episode. And not just cause of my VA cameo. So it could be during the song, maybe? I'm not 100% sure. That's a good speculation, well, actually. You know, do you remember in season one when they were all in uh, uh, the best night ever in the Grand Galloping Gala? Mm-hmm. You had the four orchestra ponies. Something yeah. tells me Daniel Ingram is going to boys one of those. Hmm. Well, that's going to be oh. interesting. Oh, great. Now you got me wishing for Octavia singing. <laughs> well, do you Come remember when... Ingram he... as Octavia? I don't know, maybe part of the, the band, but Octavia? <laughs> well, it will be a very... Hi, I'm original Octavia. ...moment when, yeah, when we realize that Octavia is a man. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, oh, no, God. it's like, don't you remember <laughs> oh, in the 2012 San Diego Comic Con, Kathy Weislack said that it would be a fun idea to have Octavia have a duet with Rarity. Uh-huh. And ever since, ever since, people have been uh, demanding to have a duet of Octavia and Rarity. Because Kathy Weislack started doing like a demo of Octavia's voice. And it sounded way too much like like she has been rehearsing and training to voice the character. Hey, James, uh, is it Kate? Kathy, or is it Tabitha? Kathy Wise, like, is, she's the one who said it, uh, you know, the voice of Spike mm. and Major Mayor. She said that she was, she, she did like a sample voice of uh, Octavia, uh, of Octavia's voice. Mm. It's on, it's on YouTube. You can look for the San Diego Comic Con 2012 mm. My Little Pony panel. And it's the interview with all the BAs and uh, the head of uh, Hasbro right. Studios and Megan McCarthy. Oh, okay. I think I did remember something like that, but how do I put this? That convention or that panel was so spaghetti fueled. No, you're, you're no, not 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 really. No, compared no, no, to the it, anime, not, sorry, uh, compared to I the anime by, Atlanta one, the anime Atlanta one was really spaghetti. No, no. What what I meant by that was it was kind of. Tabitha St. Germain said something that she was not supposed to say. Ah, yes, bro, go panic oh, when? On now. In, in what point? Um, when somebody asked, what was your favorite episode to work on or something like that? And oh, Tabitha sh- said, I like the episode where Fluttershy turns into a dragon. Oh. Oh, no. she No, no, no. She actually I realized she was confused. Uh, her real words, her words are like where uh, Fluttershy and the dragon's voices get switched. Uh, she was talking about bridal gossip because oh. the voice actor who voices the dragon in Dragon Shy is the same voice actor who voices Flutter Guy in mm. Bridal Gossip. No, but oh. so she was confused in the episode. Oh. Oh, okay, but you know it's kind of panic mode activate now. <laughs> no, well, you know people were like, "Oh my God, Flutter Shy turns into a dragon in season three, then nothing happens," and they're like, "Wait, wait, what's going on here?" <laughs> and I was like, "Ah." She confuses mm. that because she keeps talking about the episode where Flutter Shy and the dragon switches voices. So, unless it's really coming on season four, I think she just confused one episode for another. Oh, well, true that. Oh, that, that from Daniel Ingram. <laughs> well, that's oh, how that's this show happens. works. That's how this show works. We talk about one yeah. thing and then turn to another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I take blame for it. And talking about turning something to another, let's move into the next topic. Guest time. Haha, <laughs> terrible segue. So, <laughs> in today's guest time, we have Hero of Time 1000. If you don't know who that is, he is an indie game developer who worked on games such as Pony Pokey Bros too, and also the up-and-coming point-and-click adventure horror game, The Underworlds. Cello. Hello, hero. Hello. How are you doing, man? Are you having fun yet? <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm not bored. I'm not. I'm definitely not looking up. Uh, other tabs on, on my internet <laughs> while you guys are talking now. <laughs> he totally yeah. is. We need to be more entertaining. Come on, Norman. Break on the accordion. <laughs> oh, I couldn't resist. <laughs> well, anyway, Hero, how are you doing? How are you doing? I hope you're having fun. I am having fun. I am having fun. I'm definitely uh, having a good time. Uh, 
I, I was I, I I gotta admit I was going over my demon art page and just looking at the. I'm, I'm sorry, it's it's true. Uh, I was look I I was looking over and I saw the com uh, a new just a big flood of comments about the game and I was like, whoa, where did this come from? And I was like, wow, I haven't released the interview out yet. So what the hey? <laughs> But, but anyway, anyway, okay. anyway. So, Hiro, mind introducing yourself to the people who not know who you are and what you do? My name is Hero of Time 1000. I'm trying to be an indie game developer while I'm practicing how to make games using C and learning how to draw better and whatnot. Uh, I am spending most of my time practicing by making a pony version of a point and click adventure that has been inspired by the Uninvited game that is in the NES. You know, games like Uninvited, mm-hmm. Deja Vu, uh, Shadowgate. It's basically inspired by those games. And mm-hmm. as you said, it's a point and click called The Underworld's Cello. From what I can see when you played the, well, inspired by video on your YouTube page, I saw that it was related to the NES game and my... I don't like I said I don't play that much point and click games so I got no idea that's why I call in James Charlie and Lionheart because they played mm-hmm. this game before or this kind of games before you played it uninvited uh, no not really but they they play something else um before we start Charlie what, what kind of point and click games did you play during your youth during my time the best was had to be the old Lucas Arts point and click adventure games so things like uh, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis Sam and Max uh, Full Throttle Curse of Monkey Island Day of the Tentacle those kinds and also the ones from Sierra things that come to mind like Goblins and um King's Quest King's Quest oh, 7 God. was the one that I played was and oh. well <laughs> Those were the times. Um, the writing was really witty, and it's a lot of puzzle elements which I, I totally enjoyed. And uh, it just stuck. And looking back, it is, has got a very strong element of nostalgia that keeps on uh, coming back to you. And you think, whoa, these games actually um, improved me somehow. What about you, James? I was more like the type of... Uh, I started with educational games, so I'm, uh, many of the point-and-click games that I played were made by the Discovery uh, the Discovery Channel brand of PC gaming, like uh, Operation Climatic Disaster and Operation uh, uh, Ecologic Disaster. And then from there I moved to, to LucasArts, like uh, with uh, Charlie here, uh, Secret of Monkey Island 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I started playing the Indiana Jones game, but I couldn't finish it because it was full of bugs. <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't buy the game. I got it on a floppy disk. Wow. Uh-huh. L- look at the time it, I'm talking about. Um, then I also played the Sierra games. God, I played King Quest Eight, oh. And yeah, oh, I have no. never played a video game so frustrating. And I thought that it was the eighth of the series, so maybe the previous ones were better. But no, all the King Quest games are... No, no, like, you never start with eight. No, no, you don't play. You don't they play are absolutely <laughs> terrible by design. The King Quest game, the King Quest games are absolutely frustrating. That you do something <clears throat> wrong, you have to start the game all over again. Oh my! That would um, be pretty much like all Sierra games. <laughs> so, what about you, Lion? Well, uh, <clears throat> chronolog- chronologically speaking, uh, I started with. In terms of point and click, with the Sierra games, King's Quest Three, the very first version, was with what I started first. Uh, I tried the second one. Those games are very frustrating. You never could finish any of them without the hint book. Because yeah. you, there was always a point in one of those games where you had to type a sentence, not just open door, close door. You just had to go with the whole sentence. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's why the, the hint book existed. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only ones I managed to finish on my own, really, were the Space Quest series. Oh, it's still type, oh. you know. It was still the typing type of game. So those are the the only ones I managed to finish. I finished uh, the third one on my own. I finished the fourth one. The second one I needed a bit of help, but you know, it, it was still a pretty interesting game. The the first one, the remake, I also finished on my own because <laughs> I knew where everything was already. <laughs> uh, but when I saw the Lucas Hearts game, so I was like, oh my god, uh, it's. Uh, I, I can finally take my time and think about stuff and not die all the time, especially with Monkey <laughs> Island. You can die in only one place in the first Monkey Island game, oh, yeah, so I played yeah, both I of those. <laughs> yeah, try and hold your breath for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan, if I'm not mistaken, you have Indiana Jones and 
the Lost City, Lost City of Atlantis, was it? Well, I played both of the uh, the Lucas Film games at the time that where they were called the Last Crusade and the Fate of Atlantis. Oh yeah, as well as Simon Max, Day of the Tentacle, Full Throttle. Yes, uh, there was another one that I tried as well, uh, Grim Fandango. Uh, there was uh, Grim one. Fandango is really good. Yep. Well, Ryan, you have a poster for Indiana Jones, right? I have uh, an original poster for Fate of Atlantis. Oh, and that's oh. how much I like that game. Oh no, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, I mean, in terms of games, I've played all of those and and then some. Uh, I did try some other games which relate more to Heroes' uh, current project, which are uh, Microprose's Legacy, Realm of the Dead, or something like that. Yeah, it, basically, it, it, it's the main title is just called Legacy Realm of Terror. Legacy Realm of Terror. It's a very old game. It's uh, it's in terms of interface, pretty much what he has now, and it's basically that. Except instead of moving from room to room, you basically just walk around. It's a first person, but not in real time. It's uh, kind of like turn based type of stuff. You 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 go forward by by little chunks. Mm-hmm. You move forward just by pressing the. It's like the eye of the beholder type of thing. You, you just move ahead by one square, basically. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in terms of those oh. games, you know, it's, I was a mm-hmm. game junkie in the eighties and nineties. It was just nuts. Um, th- th- there is this one video game that I I cannot believe how I forgot to mention. But has anybody of you played Mist? Mist, I heard of it, but never played it. I, I tried it. it. I definitely tried Mist. it. Mist is the. It, it, it's like a David Lynch version of every point and click game. It's very cryptic, really difficult, but very rewarding. It's it's the kind of game that you get uh, to do something right, and you feel like an absolute genius <laughs> uh, because it's so it, it's so damn complicated. But no, it's it's good. It's um, it's really good, and it's a staple of point and click uh, uh, video games because of how infamous some of the puzzles were. Mm. I heard that Miss was really pretty and not like it wasn't that popular because people said it was uh, difficult, if I remember correctly. That is absolutely correct. It looks gorgeous. Even to this day, it actually held up in the graphics department, but it's really, really difficult. Mm. It involves it was time like travel. Pre-rendered. Yeah. It was yeah, it was pre rendered. There was no um uh, it's like it, there it is was no basically uh, a rail game pre rendered. It wasn't the first a yes. uh, few years of the Pentiums, I believe. It came out. Yeah, I mean, the Star Wars and everything, they all had these pre-rendered uh, little versions of backgrounds where you would play in them. It was basically a rail. Everything was on rail at that time. They said, oh my god, we can do videos on computers now, and they went crazy with this. Thing. So with that hero, you know what we like. Um, as as I said earlier, I never played any of those games they said, so I am not the right guy to talk about this. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway... Um, I'm looking through your gallery and stuff, and I do notice that you do the eight bit. I'm not sure eight bit is the right word for this. Um, I I do notice that you do the pixel arts. So what do you use to do all this? Your gallery is full of pixel art. Yeah, my, what I, program do you use to do it? Um, paint, just basic MS Paint. Really? Just back in the day. Oh my I god, tried. are you re- are you for real? I I use Graphic Gale now for animation, but I still use. Paint for now. Mm. I, I, wow! Uh, Total props. Man. I am really impressed. So that's you amazing. Likewise, <laughs> you so, really shouldn't be. <laughs> so you're saying that you use paint to do all, all the art, the MS Paint. Seriously? Yeah. So wow. those graphics that we saw in the, in, in the game, like uh, the, the the pixel art and all that, in your video game, that is also made with uh, paint. Yes, it was also made in MS Paint. Oh my god! <laughs> and you say we shouldn't be impressed? You should get an award! That's amazing! MS Paint, oh my... It was made in MS Paint, and I do have some complaints. I did post this uh, game once on a board on 4chan, and even though people really, uh, some people really like the art, there were a couple that said, why aren't you using uh, Flash, you know graphics, which is a good argument. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the fact of the matter is, I don't know how to draw well in Flash. I don't know how to um, I don't know how to use other programs to animate, so I just used the next best thing, which was uh, a pixel art animator program and just plain old MS Paint. Okay, okay. before you move on, I I want to ask you a serious question here. I'm looking at a picture called Luna Eating Chips. 
And yes, is that drawn in paint? Yes, that was drawn in paint. And animated in the animation program you said. What was it? Uh, graphic scale. My goodness, why has nobody? Why has nobody? I am lost for words right now. Oh my goodness. Clearly, I have been doing something wrong with my life. <laughs> well, I need to take a better look at him as paint. <laughs> Lion's a better pixel artist than I am. You really shouldn't be impressed. No, okay. this is just... no, really. Come on, I know how a mess paint works. You know, that's the gist of it. That's the basic thing. I know how it works. And you really took a lot of time to make this, and you decided to put everything in it, and it shows. Because honestly, I would not have guessed that it was a mess paint. Mm-hmm. And in the new game that you're doing, um, the Underworld Cello, that is also in paint, right? Yeah, that's also in paint. Wow. Oh. <laughs> almost, almost entirely. People, oh. Wow, you should get more props, man. Like, oh my goodness. The quality... I, I, at first, I thought it was... You, you were using some kind of... Um, not paint, but that's at least dedication. Photoshop. Mm. No wonder you need... Oh, wow. And, and mm, I lost for words, seriously. <laughs> so, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. That is very kind of you to say, though. I have a follow-up Norman question, wasn't then. prepared for this. Norman yeah. wasn't prepared for this. Yeah. Yeah. How, how long does it take to get one piece up using uh, MSP? Uh, usually, when it comes to making a, a room in the point-of-view screen, it mm-hmm. takes about a day. Um, okay. uh, because I have... Usually, it should take around, like, four to five hours because I have everything else going around, but I call it a day because <laughs> because uh, yeah, because I have, like, schoolwork and stuff. But usually when it comes to the bigger animations, like the vinyl falling through the floor animation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that took me around, like, two to three days. Huh? And the same could also be said for the, uh, for the uh, knife death <laughs> that uh, you see. Yes. And don't forget to mention the timber booth because that one looks good. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. The but, timber uh, walls, the ghosts, I, the, uh, the the clanging animation as well. Yeah. The the, the uh, Octavia's reactions when she gets scared or like she has to like uh, she gets so shocked that yeah she starts panicking and, and heavy breathing and shaking. Yeah, I've been doing all the drawing on my own. Wow, so not only that you program the game, you also do all the animations. Wow. You are yeah, one-man band. Really, I was trying my hand at uh, the writing, and I didn't do as well as the writing as I had hoped. But this is why you guys introduced me to Aaron Chen, and he has been an incredible help in the script writing. I mean, just great. Oh, and once again, thanks a lot for giving me no whacking, guys. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. you're going to have no. Uh, I didn't know about this. You're going to have Noah yeah, King no. doing the voice of Pinel. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I love her. Uh, I love her work. She's fantastic. Oh, she is absolutely fantastic. I just hope she has no uh, concerns about some of the stuff she's saying because I know that this is a this isn't like one of those uh, silly flash cartoons that she usually uh, you know voices. This is a whole other ballpark entirely. You know that well, means that well, like, you're out there getting recognition, getting your work out. I'm not saying that because it's it's made with a different program. I'm saying this because this is a horror game. <laughs> well, you know, oh, uh, Nova King can do, but Nova King can do drama no problem because for those of you who have watched the Tournament Storm Phoenix Wright crossover with My Little yes. Pony, mm-hmm. she was the voice of Gilda in that in that crossover. Really? And to, yeah, towards yeah. the end of of Gilda's episode. Um, it gets so heartbreakingly dramatic mm-hmm. that I. I'm not going to say it made me cry, but I just did. (laughs) Uh, It is a really good performance, and you really don't expect to hear her uh, 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 deliver such such range of acting after being the whoop, 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 whoop-tastic vinyl scratch. Yeah, I agree, I agree. She she doesn't mean Gilda as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's a great voice actress. Well, congratulations here on getting um, No Waking and also... uh, 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 I, I can never say his name out loud because he doesn't want me to say his name. So I'm just calling him Kitsu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just I just said his name out loud. Yeah. So if I get flack for it, that's okay. But yeah. 
You, you know, Buy if some you, apples. If you say it, it's okay, not me. He'll kill me. <laughs> but anyway, wow, congratulations, man. Because um, Kitsu, he really writes good, and I like his writing. I like his writing, too. And he's been uh, upgrading the script to having the uh, narrator be this voice in Octavia's head and she would argue with this voice in her head and I found that to be a nice humorous touch like the narrator's not really there yeah sure he's narrating through the whole thing but once she enters the house she can hear him and I I like to think that's a point of her madness just <laughs> sanity going away <laughs> all right you then so anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to ask the questions because uh, besides digging out on the art and other things, uh, I think people are more interested in the game design stuff. Who actually voices Octavia in the game? That would be, her screen name is called Adox Ographist and Alyssa Park, that's her name. She is just absolute deadpan Octavia in my mind. I don't think she's been in a, if she has, I haven't seen it. But I don't think she's voiced Octavia in a Flash cartoon or fan project or otherwise. And, uh, do, you, um, do you have a link to her YouTube or DeviantArt so we can check out her stuff? All I have is her voice actor page. If you want me to give you that after the interview, that'd be fine. Sure, that'd be cool. But she spoils me. <laughs> <laughs> she's she... also very good at what she does when it comes to voice acting. And I'm glad she came to my uh, help when uh, I was looking for a voice actor for Octavia early on. Mm. And she's a gem. <laughs> when I first heard so, the Octavia voice, I was like convinced, yes, that is how Octavia should sound like. She does really so, sound nice. I, I, what, at what point did you decide to bring uh, uh, voice acting in in this uh, video game? Because this kind of video game, these point and clicks, they don't usually have uh, what is... Uh, voice acting in them, unless they are like more of the modern ones when they were acting, they were adding voicing on it. So, at one point you said, you said, "Hey, I need voice actors in this game." The program I use to make the game is called Adventure Game Studios. Mm -hmm. Just this absolute fantastic program. With it, it's so easy for a programming noob such as myself to just pick it up and make a game immediately. I, I, and anyone listening to this, I, I just got to say, I heartily recommend you try this program out and see what you can make for yourself, because there definitely needs to be more adventure game ponies out there. Anyway, back to your question. When I saw that it had voice acting and lip sync in it, which the lip sync didn't go out because I'm using a, a LucasArts style of speech boxes, and it will not uh, allow you to use lip syncing with the voices. In any case... When I saw the speeches and the fact that you can add voice acting, mm -hmm. I thought to myself, yeah, I'll, I'll add that. I, was, I tried to have some voice acting with uh, Luna's Quest with, um, oh gosh, uh, who was her name? She was the name of, she was the voice actor of Princess Celestia in, in some worst cases, Molestia yeah. in some of her. Oh, uh, MMJ123. That's her. She voiced Luna when I was doing the demo of, when I was working on the demo of Luna's Quest. And uh, again, I just want to say to her, MemJ, thank you so much for trying to voice Luna. I'm sorry it didn't work out in the end. I had voices before and I wanted to do it again. I thought that voices normally would uh, enhance it a little bit more, but if people preferred to just have text only, there is an option to turn off the voices. Mm. So that's for the people who decide they want to read instead of hear voice acting. <laughs> if I recall correctly, it's very much similar to the remastered version of the old LucasArts games. Originally, they didn't have voice in them, but then they came out with a later version, added voice in them, and then they added this option where you can choose text or voice in them. So it looks as if like you're trying to, to, to emulate that, that effect. Not really. I'm not doing this, uh, like the remastered version of Monkey Island. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just, I just want that option to be there in case people don't want to, don't like voice acting in their games. Just saying. I mean, it's kind of odd because I come from the Nintendo generation where people are like, people need more voice actors in Nintendo games. And I'm like, no. Oh. Reading, what's that? <laughs> well, you, you do know there's a reason that why they put that in, right? Yeah. The, oh. the tech, the the audio on off for the the voice actors. 
Uh, when you're having no, fun trying to mix all the items, I can't do that. I can't put this item together. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. That won't work. I can't. You know, everything gets repeated over and over and over. So when you start to get stuck in a game, having the option to turn that little audio off becomes only a blessing. Yeah. That is a, yeah. That is a good point that you just brought up. Uh, the whole kind of put these items together. That is one thing that I wanted to comment you about, the, about, about your video game is that um, uh, the first, the inventory screen, to me, I had the feeling that it was a bit small compared to the amount of items that you can grab on the game. Like, you can literally go to the fridge and get, uh, basically ransack the entire fridge, fridge which I, I thought was hilarious. Uh, Make a salad! I, 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 get the, I, I get the feeling that because you put the up and, on, up and down arrows on there, so I, I guess that you're going to make the inventory uh, bigger. Or is like, as you progress the game, is the inventory going to get bigger? What, what, what's, what's your plans for that inventory screen? Um, the plan for my inventory screen is basically inside of the study room, which you could not enter in the demo, but inside mm -hmm. of the uh, study there is a inventory chest that you can store items in and out of, and yeah. I guess... I guess you hold a very good point about those arrows, and I really should think about uh, think about uh, um, removing those if they become unnecessary. But uh, I will use those arrows to scroll through the items which are stored in that inventory chest. And that is that is that is good. One 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 thing I have to praise for uh, f uh, to your game, the, the gameplay thing, is that it's so gleefully easy and simple. Like in the in the Monkey Island games, I don't know if you guys remember, but you had like nine options for every oh, single yeah. one of the items. You are lock, item, open, close, look, use, all the verbs, twist, all the actions, turn, all yeah. of them. However, here oh, yeah. you just have the eye, the eye and the hoof. You can look at it, or you can take Either. it and use it, or just mm -hmm. use it with the hoof. It's like so simple. That is good. That is really yeah, good. When you have good. a point and click game, you have to make it as easy to understand as possible mm. that's that, that, that's something that i can press. open a two-page <laughs> yeah the original uninvited which uh i'm making an homage to had like 10 different commands for oh, everything and i thought to myself if i'm going to make a game in this generation uh i think i can make everything much easier to work with than with all these ten commands, because I can see this becoming a frustration in the future. Mm. So I just thought to myself, there needs to be a better interface, and I found one. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. well, games have evolved since uh, uh, since Uninvited, and there are things that when that were corrected. Just like if you take, for example, um, Zach McCracken and the Alien oh. Mindbender, or any very early. Lucas Films games, you have all those verbs, all those actions, all those commands that you can use, and only a handful of them are really useful. And then by Monkey Island 2, they had this down to 9 or 10, depending, and then you just remove them <laughs> entirely. Yeah, And you, you had this. basic uh, on screen user interface that you would just access when you needed it to. It, it gave more, more room for the, the backgrounds, and it was really useful. So trying to copy the game uh, as is. Without making any changes, you, you repeat the mistakes that they made earlier on. And there were also uh, the limitations of the consoles. So you can definitely push a bit more, and that's what you did. Uh, although, the like, uh, like James said, the inventory screen with the arrows, sometimes it's not always clear how much space you have. I had to read the readme text to, to know, oh, I only have six spots. You know, what And I wasn't sure what it looked like. You know what would be best? I think it mm -hmm. would be best of me. Uh, you just gave me a good idea. I think it would be best of me if I were to add a counter above it that said mm. item space zero out of six or mm. two out of six. or Well, you could always make it like well, a Resident Evil, a grid, yes. where when you, once you have an object, it's just in, the, in one of those little exactly. boxes. 
Exactly. It will be a great. It's a great idea, um, and it's good that you bring Resident Evil up because that game is also it's point and click with guns in it. <laughs> <laughs> it literally, it's, is. Yes. It, it's it's a it's a prototypical point and click game where you can kill zombies with a shotgun in real time. You don't need to like click shotgun on zombie to kill. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a point, and, and it has a very similar inventory system. But that's mm-hmm. that's a good idea. Another another gameplay addition that you had in this game, which. I, I really love because it's something that horror games don't do often enough is that you have something like a sanity meter. She will start losing her mind because of the horrible things that uh, she's seen in this, in this mansion. And it added a sense of uh, uh, urgency because if she loses her mind too much, she will like, um, I, I, it didn't happen to me, but what happens if the sanity meter w- goes way too high and she just starts losing her, uh, she's like going off her rocker? What, what will happen? I got her? it up to yellow. There's ghosts appearing behind her. It's uh, really spooky. I, I, I got it all the way up to red. Well, basically, <laughs> it, it is what you expect in this. You die. <laughs> you go insane. I didn't, yeah, I didn't just, want her to go just... insane. Yeah, she just screams, kills over, and then the Messix, uh a uh, message just comes up saying you're dead. Do, 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 Same thing. Um, that, that, uh, that, uh, that addition, that gameplay part is really interesting because, like I said, it adds a sense of urgency to the game that I haven't seen in a point and click game since, uh, Clock Tower. Now, I don't know if any of you has played Clock Tower. Yeah, oh man, Clock Tower. It's a, it's a Super Nintendo video game, uh, point and click as well. That you were I haunted. The PlayStation version. <laughs> oh, it, it was really, it was really terrifying because you were haunted in this in this mansion by man. these uh, t- tiny man with giant scissors, called the scissor, scissor man. man. Yeah. yeah, there was no way for you to get uh, away from it. Uh, there was no way for you to to kill it up until the end of the game. You can only get away from it, and. If you stayed in a room for far too long, he will appear and he will start moving towards you. Mm. So it's kind of like a time limit for you to, yes. to, to finish the game before he decides to cut you open with a game over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh my gosh. Clock Tower for the PlayStation 1 did survival horror right. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I am having a, I'm having a fan moment. It is such a shame that Capcom bought Clock Tower and just completely screwed it up uh, on three. Oh, yeah. I, I played Clock Tower 3 till end. How do I put this? It was an interesting game. It was an interesting game. Yeah. Yes, I'll have to try it a bit more now. Yeah, I have to explore more of this, actually. It sounds very interesting. Actually, I would, is it possible for you to uh, like generally explain how you uh, progress the game? As in, what is your estimated time of completion? What are your plans in the future? How much you want to add? Things just just generally it doesn't have to be too specific. Oh well, why don't you list one question at a time, and I'll answer the best of my abilities. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. What's the ETA or estimated time of uh, arrival of this game? <laughs> If everything goes according to plan and, not, and there's nothing that goes completely wrong, mm-hmm. I want to have this game released by at least Halloween 2004. Mm. Okay. All right. To keep up with its horror genre. <laughs> if it's any earlier than that, I will release it earlier. It doesn't have to be on Halloween. Okay. I highly encourage you to keep working on it because it's looking really, really good. I mean, uh, the sense of immersion that the game has is ridiculous i I know don't worry because what i'm going to say it's absolutely true you have basically the inventory system takes uh, the left the the right side then you have the middle panel where you have octavia and the sanity meter and the the different actions and then you have just that window with the house and and what you see that little window has a lot more sense of uh, claustrophobia uh, uh, dread, fear, and horror than many Hollywood horror movies nowadays. <laughs> it's so well planned, <laughs> and the fact that it takes place in such a small window, it just amplifies the, the tension of what's happening. Um, I think, in my opinion, the inventory is very well done, and the, 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 the gameplay window is also really well done. I highly encourage you to keep working on it and finish it. Uh, also because I'm, I'm an egotistical... <laughs> And I want to, I want to finish playing it. I want to see the end. <laughs> <laughs> An achievement, Todd. Wow, I did not know that, James. What? 
I started it. I want to finish it. That's how he thinks. <laughs> I need, I need to, yeah, I need to finish that game now. Oh, oh, and speaking of which, are you planning on having different endings? Not to yes. reveal what they are going to oh. be, but yes, yes, yes. I will not spoil things, but depending on how well you Ooh, play, interesting. Uh, things just got there, much more interesting. Uh, uh, depending on how well you play and what your actions will be you will get different endings of the game. Yeah. It could be the best of all endings, or Octavia's going to be truly alone. Oh. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is not going to be like the Mass Effect 3 ending, right? Uh, huh? <laughs> we don't touch 3. Mass Effect. We don't touch Mass Effect The Mass Effect ending? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's still way too recent. We don't talk about that, uh, about touchy subjects. Oh. Um, yeah, it, just, just don't make it as difficult as Symphony of the Night, for example, you oh. know? <laughs> oh, trying to get uh, over a hundred something, two hundred percent of the game, just so that you could see this "quote unquote" special ending. <laughs> oh, I went to too many sleepless nights for that. Oh um, no, no, it's not. Gonna I be, feel. If, oh, go on, if you go use on. your brain. It won't be difficult, too difficult to obtain. In fact, I do think that people are going to get the uh, one of the two normal endings first before they really try to screw up big time to see the bad ending, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. The fact that you are using Octavia as the main character, just it kills me whenever something bad happens to her because <laughs> Octavia is like, she's my favorite background character in the entire show. So I suffer for her. I am suffering like crazy for her. I don't want her, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. No. So I want her to be I just want Octavia to get out. <laughs> it's, it's I want her to succeed. I chose her in the they, first place. Oh, really? Yeah, I... That's awesome, because I want her to succeed. I want her to get through and survive. When I look at stuff like Epic Web Time and, and stuff like that, I always thought to myself, Octavia is uh, put it as this pitiable character. She's, <laughs> she's living the life with a loud DJ, and it seems that she's having trouble having life go her way in the ways of... <laughs> terms of success and i thought to myself this is a really fun character to put in a haunted house situation <laughs> where she is just oh gosh what do i do i i know i've been in bad situations like this but never before is it like this and she's like let me out <laughs> genius I have a question That's, here. so yeah, I was. You, you answered a question that I completely forgot about. I was going to ask you: out of all the characters that the show can give us, why Octavia? Mm-hmm. So that's why. Interesting. So the pitiable character. The reason I chose a background pony, quote unquote, is because when I was working on Luna's Quest, many things were happening on the show's canon that ah. made things change way too much for me discord was reformed uh luna started to lose her old english dialect just so many things were going on to change i'm so happy that i was able to just devote it to background ponies that you know could come with their own lore with their own you know with their own story and well, um, the showrunners the showrunners have gone on record to say that they take care of the main characters and the, the background characters are our responsibility. Yes, because we, we can make stories for them, we can make uh, background stories for them, and we can just roll with it. And I'm like, that's so nice of them. But I think it's much better to just do a background pony than with a official show pony. I mean, mm. like center focus pony. I just find it better to use one of those. But anyway. Yeah, it's okay, understandable, understandable. If you started the game with Twilight being the main star for this game, and in the end of Season 3 she became an Alicorn, your game is going to be, well, let's just say obsolete. Outdated before yeah. it comes out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, understandable. So, um, an interesting question here. Um, you selected an Earth Pony as the main character. So, have you always wanted to use an Earth Pony, or did the idea of using a Unicorn or Pegasi was there from the very beginning. I didn't at first, but when I started working on it and I saw how much limitation that an Earth Pony has compared to a Pegasus that can go at anywhere or anything, you know, that can escape from any pit or whatnot, Mm -hmm. and the fact that unicorns use magic to solve all their problems. (laughs) um, Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, what about the unicorns? (laughs) <laughs> Makes you think um, a bit more. 
So, yeah, but as I continued through the game, I thought to myself, wow, I'm so happy I picked an Earth Pony here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so it never crossed your mind then? Yeah, it never it never crossed my mind until the middle of production where I'm like, wow, I'm glad I got this character who needs to use her mind instead of her magic or wings. Well, you know, if you want to make the game more difficult, you can always add a, uh, a unicorn, <laughs> but have everything go wrong for her. It's like, don't stop using your magic. Use your head. <laughs> no, 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 no. You want it, no, you want it to make it more difficult. Thinking, have huh? the game star in Princess Twilight, but she has no horn, no wings, and no legs. <laughs> well, what the heck? <laughs> Like, Discord starts at the beginning of the game and says, oh, by the way, I'm making the game more interesting, so I'm taking this. Pop! And then the, the objective of the game is getting all of that back. <laughs> Torso Twilight, just bouncing around. Yeah, I a, a twi- warm then sparkle. Then I will take your legs. <laughs> then I will take your sight. Anybody who played Earthbound will get that reference. Anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God, that was that's creepy. Now I'm going to take your hearing. Oh, my yeah. goodness. He knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. I do. Earthbound is such a good game. Oh, gosh, it is. I I have a question uh, regarding this project. Uh, is this the only project you're working on at the moment, or are you multitasking and juggling uh, other other things as well? Um, This is the only project I have going because every ounce of my time besides the game is pushed down by school. I'm trying to get myself an associate of art degree so that way I can learn how to draw better. And then I plan to get myself a programming degree and hopefully that'll help me make uh, some independent games in the future uh, that mm-hmm. aren't pony related, which is a big awe, but it needs to happen. <laughs> no, I fully support that because uh, I've always had the viewpoint that the pony fandom is always somewhat of a platform which you use uh, as an existing base into to becoming independent. That means that... It's a springboard fandom. If it attracts an audience that sticks around and allows me to showcase other ideas to them that aren't pony-related, and they say it's good, then at least I have an audience to sell a quick $5 game to. So, mm. you know, something like that. For example, just take a look at the main six. Um, the couldn't finish their game but they're currently working on something new and the fan base for that one it's growing it's growing yeah Um, Mm -hmm. yeah exactly they're going they're turning uh, fighting is magic into into a new ip Mm -hmm. but that can only have positive consequences because this is completely brand new and nobody has used these characters before they can take it to uh, microsoft or they can take it to sony steam and they can put it on another license Mm. Yes, yeah. it's completely brand new. It's a new IP. It's a new inter- intellectual property. So they can claim copyright on this on these characters. They can have uh, this video game uh, to be sold all over the world. Mm, and it's, yeah. it, it's like and no I, waste of their talent. Yes, yes. And I do hope they get all the success in the world because getting slapped in the face by Hasbro is just such, such... Yeah. yeah. It's no fun. Uh, that's... Right now, that is my biggest well, fear, and I'm putting this to, under wraps as much as I possibly can. You know what? You shouldn't be worried about that, because for now, your project is not causing any revenue, it's not making you gain incredible amounts of money, and the only reason why Main6 was a slab with a, with a C&D was because during this EVO competition, mm-hmm. uh, they were like, ranking donations. a lot of donations, and... All those other, uh, all those other donators and people who are supporting all the other games, they pointed this to Hasbro, and Hasbro decided to throw a C and D on their faces. But if you were Hasbro, you would have done the exact same thing. You yeah, have to protect yeah. your international IP. Imagine yeah, if the guys that do fighting is magic, they see somebody use their characters, they will have to protect them. So they, they will have, have no to choice. use a C and D as well. Yeah, there, there is no choice. That's how American mm-hmm. copyright laws work. They are sure. they are hog tied. I'm pretty sure Hasbro will be very happy to let these guys use their characters. Because uh, ultimately, Hasbro is making money out of the toys. They don't make money out of the TV show. And I am not defending Hasbro. I'm not taking Hasbro's side. I'm taking the side of logic and and, and calm. It makes all sense. But you have nothing to worry about, really. For one, you're not using the main six. You're not derogating from their idea that friendship Mm -hmm. is magic. You're basically trying to save both Vinyl and Octavia, and they're both friends. And you're telling a story outside of the main... Main Well. I don't want to say the main canon, but you're telling a story, basically, that the doesn't affect all of their preconceived ideas. 
And you're not right. making any money again out of this. So basically, yes, you're yes. all safe and you're having fun, which is the most important thing of all. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to keep it that way because I don't want everybody's work to go up in flames. Yeah. Oh, understandable, understandable. If mentioned, you've used Adventure Game Studios, AG, uh, AGS, and also yeah. MS Paint. Uh, do you use any other software in the makings of this game? When it comes to adding a little bit more light and shadow, I do use um, Macromedia Fireworks to because their uh, their lightened and darker tools are really helpful. But that's about it. Everything else is just mainly done in ADS and Paint, and of course graphic scale. But other than that, that's all I'm using. Okay, is it all self-taught, as in you learned this yourself, or did you pick it yes. up in school? Oh, wow. yeah. all right. Well, that, that makes it even more uh, impressive. YouTube was your teacher? <laughs> uh, YouTube was my teacher, yes. Yay. YouTube is everyone's teacher. That is very true. Many of the tutorials I've seen on, on painting and drawing techniques, <laughs> YouTube. It's true, it's true. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a resource. When I first started with Adventure Game Studios, and I still watch them to help uh, me get used to coding is that there is a, um, a a tutorial on how to use Adventure Game Studios oh. on YouTube that's very factual. It doesn't cover everything, but it covers enough mm-hmm. to get you started. So how long have you been using these tools, uh, AGS and uh, Macromedia? I've been using Paint for a long time, like <laughs> long, long time. But when it comes to AGS... I mm-hmm. used it for about two years. When I worked on Luna's Quest, though, I was working on a um, on an interface that was provided for me. AGS has that option of allowing it to just make this uh, all the all the GUIs for you, all the interfaces pre-made for you, so that way you could just pick it up and put whatever textures you want. But when I improved over time, when I started Octavia's Cello, mm-hmm. I I basically. Um, Octavia Underworld's cello, I basically made my own interface because I had all the experience I need to make this completely new interface because the other one did have all the stuff that usual adventure games had, like uh, like a touch, smell, uh, take, you know, examine, stuff like that. And that was, I was like, that's too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like I mentioned before, like that's too many options, too many options. Mm-hmm. It's good that you simplified it. It's innovation, yeah. making something better out of pre-existing stuff. Well, right. yeah, and and simplifying it. Look at Steve Jobs with his one button <laughs> <Yeah>. technology. <laughs> hey, it's true. Apple is so good because it's simplified. So when it comes to the uh, to the genre of uh, point and click adventure video games, what would you say are the weak points and the strongest points of this genre and how are you working around to avoid as many weak points as you can in in your video game i've played enough adventure games to know that as long as there's uh strong and sensible puzzles that make sense in a game i try to use logic in many of my puzzles to make sure that players can navigate their way through and give out uh you know a subtle hint here and there if they get stuck the one thing that I absolutely do not like in adventure games is moon logic. And what that term means is rubber chicken in the pulley in the middle. Come on, pie on, Yeti. <laughs> <Seriously>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw a pie at the Jetty. Yeah, yeah, that's that's King's Quest V. That's moon logic. You wouldn't know how to throw a pie in the Yeti because you would use every single piece of inventory to see what worked, and uh, and this brings and up every point. time. Yeah, and this brings up another point. If you didn't have it, you'd be stuck, and you'd have to reload the game again. That's oh, another thing yes. I want to avoid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the one example that we, that uh, Hero Hero is talking about is that the scenario is so ridiculous. You have two items that you can eat in your inventory. You have a lamb chop and a custard pie, and if you don't eat something, mm-hmm. you die. So if you eat the custard pie, then you encounter a jetty, and the jetty kills you because you couldn't throw the custard pie at his face. <laughs> right. And then Sierra you're stuck, logic. and then you have to reload the game wow. again. That's, that's moon logic. That's, that's what Hero's talking about, and it's absolutely ridiculous. 
yeah, it's, it's frustratingly awful. Uh, Hero, I would like to know your opinion on red herring items. You know, those things that have got no use whatsoever. Do, do you approve I, or do you not approve? I plan to at least have an item that has one use and one use only, maybe more. Uninvited had a lot of crap that you could just carry around and put down at any time. Uh, and you have to know which item is essential to you in order to beat the game. But other than that, you could carry pretty much every single thing that isn't glued down from the house. And I thought to myself, uh, that's needless. If I don't want you to carry that, I'll tell you. If you don't need to carry that, I'll tell you in the game. Are you saying that we can use the mayonnaise that we have in the in the fridge? Eventually, yes. Oh my god, that's <laughs> awesome. I knew it. I knew carrying that mayonnaise was going to be I know, water. you just want to make a salad, right? Oh, I'm shit. hungry. He's not far off. There's lettuce. Actually, There's tomato. Not far There's... Off. No, but I tried to use the salad. Uh, the salad. <laughs> I had to use the mayonnaise on the spiders. And then I, when I tried to use the wrench on the spider webs, it says, well, the spider is going to bite me. So I tried to everything I had and I could carry short of just biting them uh, to get rid of the spiders. And I, I realized, oh, OK, maybe I don't need to do that until I finally no, saw. But you're little... far off with the salad idea. <laughs> I but tried still, to use I mean, the I did mayonnaise. Buy quite a few things. I tried to the mayonnaise to unstuck make, the dough. Make, thinking make, 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 a sa- no. make a salad. Make a salad and don't eat it because you have to throw it at the timber wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I have something <laughs> definitely in mind with the timber wolf. I have been working right now on a puzzle to get rid of it for good because mm-hmm. you need to get rid of it in order to explore the house further. I'm not going to say how. You're not getting any <laughs> hints from me. You figure it out. No. No, 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 no hints. No hints, no spiders to it. In the year yes. 2007, uh, Capcom designed a video game for the Nintendo Wii called Second Wiki. Second Wiki is a point-and-click uh, classic video game where you can use uh, the Wii mode for uh, for endless different uh, uh, types of actions like a phone, a drill, a hammer, a, a screwdriver, a lever, whatever you want. And it's a classic point-and-click game in the same way of Monkey Island or or Green Fandango. And one of the things that came with the game was a hint system that you could use to like, okay, you can pay this much money because in the game you could earn money and you can use that money to, to buy hints that will tell you a clues to solve this puzzle or another. So my right. question is, are you planning on doing something similar, adding a hint system or uh, make a difficulty setting that allows people to like ask for help if they are too lost? There is already a hint system in the game. You just didn't notice her yet. Oh. oh Wait, I didn't, I didn't notice because I didn't pay attention or because you didn't make it obvious? The hint system, I think I know what you're talking about. Talking about the ability to talk to Vinyl in the um, dumbwaiter, right? She helps a bit, yes. Yes. Ah, oh, I, didn't, I didn't talk to her. I, I was, <laughs> uh, no, I, well, I didn't ask for hints. I was just coming back to make sure that she was okay. I, I really like Vinyl as well. So I was yeah. like, oh my god, please, don't, 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 nothing bad happened to you. God damn it, I'm going to get you alive out of here. In the game, if you do become stuck, there's a little thing that activates. Like, it, it's not activated when the Timberwolf is sleeping, but when it's awake and you don't know what to do, finals option opens where you can talk to her and she would give out the hint, oh, it has something to do with <laughs> kitchenware. And then you would put together, oh, maybe you have to do something with the pan or the spoon until you eventually figure out, oh, hey, it's both. <laughs> Use mayo on pan. Use pan with drawer. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> the drawer has splintered. But, but I want to add um, more interaction messages than that did nothing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because I've watched a couple videos of let's plays of my demo who oh, tried to use that, who tried to use the hat <laughs> on the zombie head, and I want to put in a unique message there. And even a special animation, if I can, of her putting that on the selfie. <laughs> Actually, uh, I've, make really, like... I've really noticed there was one um, regarding the key. <laughs> was it your idea or was it um, Kitsune's idea about the key and Vanyo? The the key in the zombie's mouth? Uh, no, no, no. Um, at, at the start of the game, when you pick up the key under the mat, apparently you oh, can use that... the key on Vanyo. <laughs> That was my idea first, but uh, Kitsune, he was able to expand on that. Now when you poke her, she says, ow, my ribs. <laughs> so um, so for, for the record now, um, 
Kitsune's involvement is just recent, right? Um, when the demo came out, he was not involved, right? Yeah, that was the mm-hmm. most recent one. Nothing else has come out. When I get No Whacking's um, voice, though, I plan to release a video of the new uh-huh. intro because uh-huh. I want to show off the voice actors work in it. Are, are you going to put more Easter eggs like that one? I don't know. Uh, yeah. like you wanted to put something funny with the hat and the zombie head? If there are enough voice lines to cover it, yes, I will uh, put in some unique messages or a unique joke to it. Because something's got to reward the um, the player if they do something ridiculous <laughs> enough. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't go Space Quest 3 crazy either, trying to put every different possible way to die in a little image, you know? Oh, no, no, not every possible way to die, just a joke, you know? (laughs) I don't want him to die immediately when they put a hat on the zombie. That would just be cruel. That wouldn't allow them to try anything. Who do you have involved in the music department for the game? Uh, So far, a new one. And that is a big problem because uh, I plan to have some music puzzles in the game, and I need a musician to help Uh, me out. Okay. So you've got voice actors down, and you need musicians. Well, musicians, if you're listening to this, email Hero. He needs you. I mean, seriously. My uh, email, in case you're wondering, is all lowercase, all one word, mariobud at gmail.com. As in Mario's bud. Don't don't ask me why I have that email. I just okay. do. Okay. We are not going to. We don't have any interest in knowing how you have that email. I, I just thought of a question after this conversation. Uh, do you have any plans for any sort of achievement system for the game? Achievements? Yeah. No, I would think that the endings would be achievement enough. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so there won't be any ridiculous things like, oh, getting all the possible ways to die, or doing all the ridiculous things. No, achievements are overrated anyway. Oh, God. Thank you for saying that. (laughs) No, Charlie, no. No, no, I'm not interested. I just wish to know if there is going to be one. (laughs) Uh, Getting the best ending should be an achievement enough. Yeah, reaching the the end and and the... Yeah, the, oh god, that should be an, an achievement in itself. But I agree I agree with what Hero is saying here, that achievements are absolutely incredibly overrated. And I'm saying this only in an Xbox and having over 60,000 on gamer score. Seriously, achievements are ridiculous. And I think they are an artificial way of having the person enjoy the video game. It's yeah. almost like hand waving, a hand guiding you to like, oh, oh, you see, here's a hint in the achievements, but we're not going to tell you. You have to <laughs> find it. Like, person have, people have to be curious by themselves. They don't have to be forced to be curious just because they want mm-hmm. a shiny medal they cannot, they cannot, uh, show to her, to their friends. Uh, if they can show you in the game attack. They made this as a way to expand gameplay and uh, improve replayability. Like, oh, you missed something? Well, then now you can play it again and try and mm. get that and impress your friends and all of that. So that's what yeah. multiple mm. endings are for. <laughs> mm-hmm. Talking about playing the game more than once, do you plan on expanding the story or the game from Vinyl's point of view? Uh, yes, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and in fact, Vinyl's cooperation is needed to get the best ending. So you do get to play as Vinyl when she's stuck inside of the uh, quote-unquote party room. And oh, it's so awesome. I can feel James on the edge of his seat now. <laughs> I, you know what? I was, I was more thinking on, oh, God, I hope this video game doesn't go the shipping route. Uh, because it's so... No, honestly, guys, it's so easy in this fandom to just take these two and just... Ship them like <laughs> FedEx, and I'm like, I don't think that's a good <laughs> idea. Like, no matter even, what, even Hiro, I trust that you would do the right thing with the storyline. <laughs> I have some personally. I think I the idea, the, even the idea of them being friends, is a bit of an. Uh, uh, it's a bit out there, but it's more tolerable than the idea of them being like lovers. I'm like, no. I'm not going to add any of that. You can trust yeah. me on that one. I'm not going to add shipping of any kind. If anything. This was a party that they got into, and as you could see from the beginning, Vinyl still likes Octavia. But the thing is, Octavia is trying to find Vinyl because I feel that Octavia feels that she's responsible for Mm. her safety. So she's doing the right thing and trying to find and save her. So there is definitely going to be some friendship because it's magic in this show. 
but that's as far as it's going to get. No shipping whatsoever. So he, here's a silly question. Um, the demo is out and everybody has played it. So has anybody complained about vinyl's eye color? <laughs> huh, good question. Oh, oh, uh, no one's brought it up, oh, actually. Okay, because we know how the fandom works, because people are saying, Ah, oh, her eyes are supposed to be red! Ah. Ruined forever! <laughs> yeah. So, well, th- that's good to yeah. know, that's good to know. I think you guys noticed that her eyes are, quote-unquote, show cannon, so... Show cannon <laughs> nice, I don't right? mind, really. Yeah, they, right. they are Rainbow Dash's eyes color, and uh, they're like fu- fuchsia. I think it's magenta. Um, Magenta, magenta. Mm. Magenta, magenta. And you know, magenta is a different yeah. color, it's a different tone of red. Yeah, I know my colors in English, in Spanish, not in <laughs> oh, it's English. It's cool, it's cool. Uh, Hiro, I would like to know, um, you obviously worked on uh, previous games uh, before Octavia uh, on the World Channel. You have uh, Luna's Quest and a uh, Pony 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 Hacks, yeah. Ah, so you have been doing um, <coughs> ROM hacks for, for quite some time before this, have you? I was dabbling in it. I can't say that I've done it for a long time. Otherwise, it would show professional-wise. I mean, at best, I, I, I can't look at my ROM <laughs> hacks anymore. They're, I feel like I feel like it's been... I, I can look at Octavia and the Underworld's Cello and think, yeah, this, is, this has put effort into it. But um, when I look at my ROM hacks, I think to myself, I, I really could have done better. <laughs> it became more apparent when uh, White Hawk Punch... Uh, replayed my ROM hacks in his channel re- just recently, and I I look at it and I keep thinking to myself, "Gosh, what was I smoking while I was drawing all that?" What? Uh, before before I, I wanted to say something to you regarding the ROM hacks, but first I wanted to know which ROM hacks uh, did you did you do? I did Super Fluttershy Land two and Pokey Pokey. <laughs> Pokey Pony Panic, oh my God. which is... What? Okay, I played, I played Fluttershy Land 2. I love that one. I, I, I really enjoy that. I, I had no idea oh. you did that one. Oh my God, that's, that's fantastic. Um, but one thing you have to keep in mind is that your old world, even though it's cringe-worthy to look back to, it's there to remind you where you came from. Like, if yeah. you don't know, if you don't know what you did before, you don't realize how good you are doing right now. So, yeah, it's cringe-worthy. It's difficult to look at it, but it's, it's good to have a pers- to have some perspective. So, uh, so you know where you are, where you are now, where you were before, are, and where you can be in the future. Wow. Thank you for that. Oh, you're very welcome. That's true. Uh, I have yes, a question so. regarding, uh, Pony Pookie Penny. Um, is that considered a ROM hack as well? Yes, that's also considered a ROM hack of Super Mario Brothers 2, also called Super, Doki Doki uh, Super Mario oh. Brothers USA. Uh, yeah, so. the, the, yeah, it was a it was a Japanese game Doki called Panic. Doki 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 Panic. Doki Doki Panic, right? Which is where <laughs> I got the name Pony Pony Panic. Awesome. Yes. It's uh, it, it, it's called Super Mario Bros. 2 uh, American Edition because the original Super Mario Bros. 2. It was way too difficult. They were con- they considered it was way too difficult for American audiences, so they brought a dumbed down <laughs> uh-huh. version. And I don't know how insulting <laughs> that yeah. is. No, really, that's what they did. It. That's why they did it. No. Interesting thing I about know this game, Pony um, Pokey Penny. I actually played this game uh, one year ago, according to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was the first time I've seen um, I've seen your work out there, and, and frankly speaking, I'm, it's quite impressive. Um, the sprites work perfectly. The way you chose the uh, ponies, <laughs> the background ponies, just to substitute the characters. Um, Lyra was Luigi, Twilight Sparkle was Mario, and um, yeah. Chixie was Toad. <laughs> I was going over in a, I was going over a uh, unicorn <laughs> phase during that time. <laughs> <laughs> Unicorn. It was nice. Um, it was nice. Yeah, it's a difficult game, but uh, it's it come back to the nostalgia element. Like I played this game when I was like I don't know, back in the Nintendo days, and then coming back and seeing it, we found oh okay, I'll mm-hmm. give it a go again, and I find the game is very difficult again. They basically dumbed that game down more in the Game Boy Advance oh, wow. version, and so I think people got too used to the Super Mario All-Stars version, and then for the recent people who played the Game Boy Advance version, they would find that the NES version is much <laughs> more difficult. That's how we roll, babies. Hey, I prefer the NES version, and frankly, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I can play it, you know, flawlessly, unlike some American gamers. Wow, so. <laughs> putting it out, eh? Wow, you know, yeah, yeah, try oh, making it now. Oh, 
Credit, credit to you, I have never finished any of those games. Oh, Mega Man. I can't oh, beat Air Man. <laughs> but there's a song about that one. <laughs> Mega Man is very hard, man. I, yes. it's, it's a rage no, game, no, you know? Man. You play it, and then you keep on losing over and over you and over what? again. And I feel like Mega Man. The computer, the that's how you learn, you know? No, I played Mega Man. And the recent Mega Man I played was, I think it was the Mega Man and Bass or Forty. Oh god, I don't remember the name, but it's for the Super Nintendo. That one was pretty hard, but going back to Mega Man 9 on the new system, 9 and 10, those are stupid hard. If if anybody out there knows what I'm talking about, Concrete Man, the first boss you fight, that was already hard. Mm. Oh, wait, that was Mega Man 10 you're talking about. No, no wait, I, 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 wait, Mega Man, was it 9, the, gun, the, the one that had the female uh, robot nine. master? Right, yeah, Splash so, Woman. That was nine. Was so yeah, Splash Woman. Difficult. Yeah, like playing those games, and I played it and thought to myself, "Was Mega Man ever this hard? I, I don't remember being this hard." Yeah, yeah. Mega Man <laughs> Two is the. It, it's really oh. difficult. I say Mega Man Two is the only Mega Man oh. pl- game I played, but it's really, you know, really difficult. Start the game, beat Metal Man, and use his weapon all the time. <laughs> it's broke. That's what I did. <laughs> even even with that. Uh, even with that was hard, I am just I, I'm, I'm useless with uh, platforming games, let alone platforming action games. It's cool, it's cool. The only game that I can play is Metroid. Yeah, Metroid's not that easy. Metroid's of not of easy. that genre. Metroid is not easy, but it's a great game. What? You mean you don't like <laughs> Castlevania? <laughs> no, you know what? I did play... Uh, I played and finished Symphony of the Night oh, on the 360 uh, because it's available on the marketplace. I, I beat the hell out of that game. But I didn't mm-hmm. play any of the others. I got uh, uh, up on on the original Castlevania for the oh, for the NES. I I got so mad I threw the video game <laughs> out the window. I'm not even. Really? Oh, it's not no no euphemism. No anything. Took the game, just Sweet. throw it out the window. I pick it up the next the next way the next the next day. It kept okay. working. If you see Castlevania Chronicles on the marketplace or wherever, because I don't know if it's there, the, uh, don't try it because you're going to throw your console oh, out. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. It got, it's gotten to a point where I just want video games that I can think what <laughs> I want to do and, and strategize and plan things. Like right now I'm playing XCOM Enemy Unknown to prepare myself for XCOM <laughs> Enemy Within. That's the game I'm playing, at, uh, I'm playing at the moment. Cool. Can I, can I sing a, can I, may I sing a swan song for uh, a game that I oh, sure. played recently? Yes. Okay. Uh, DuckTales oh, Remaster. I want to get that game. Ooh. From what I've seen, it's really good. I want oh. to get that game, too. Okay, let me just say a couple things. I love this game for two reasons. One, not only for its nostalgic value, but two, it doesn't it doesn't bullcrap you on, on the difficulty, like most of the other games. It keeps its, its NES hardness and even turns oh, it up boy. to 11. Um... And, and but I when I when I played the game, it was so hard to beat Mount Vesemus, and and by gosh, was it worth it just to see the end? I played it on hard from the beginning, and I never played Ducktales until oh, that I, very I, game. I, I never played it. I, I, you're I, lucky. I played Ducktales before, and, and on, on the NES, and what I, I remember having fun with it, like sitting down and playing it through completion. And back in the days, I got no idea what I did. All I knew was I finished the game, and boy, was it fun. But Yeah, but I remember a time when finishing a game was new to me. Because <laughs> yeah, when you start on Atari or ColecoVision, or sometimes <laughs> even just old uh, Commodore 64 type of games, they never end. You rack up score, <laughs> yeah, you rack up score, and you rack up score. The game loops and becomes harder and harder and harder. Yes. And, well, uh, by the That's time you exactly have a game it. that ends, you just go... <gasps> I reached something new. <laughs> no, but still. That's, exactly, that's pretty much when video games started to change, where you can actually finish the game instead of just being a point ranker. Mm. I never had DuckTales for the NES. I had it for the Game Boy because I have never had a Nintendo. Oh. I was a Sega guy. I, I was a Sega guy. I had a Master System 2 with uh, Donald Duck's Lucky Dime Caper. Okay. And I remember that I game. never... N- and Alex Kidd too. Uh, Alex Kidd in Miracle World. And I never played uh, DuckTales, but I remember the, the moon theme, I remember how difficult the game was, on, on Game Boy at least and I'm very happy to hear that the remastered version has the same difficulty level that it doesn't BS you with 
We've, yeah, and you uh, know what the worst crime is? What is it? You what? know what the worst crime is? People don't like it. What? People say Why? it's people because people say it's too hard. They're oh. too they're they're uh, too used to the Call of Duty hold your hand kids. throughout the gameplay. We won the spawn we where is my spawn point? I want a checkpoint. You mean I have to play the entire game from the beginning? My health Shut doesn't up. go up. My health doesn't go up. What can I do? Well, you get the medkit. What? That's bullcrap. You want to play... No, what? not even medkits. You want to play a hardcore first-person shooter game? Play... I, I hate I'm going to say this, but play GoldenEye. GoldenEye oh. is hardcore. Oh, boy. You have oh, yeah. one health bar. And if you get killed, you have to start the level all over again. And you have to be careful when doing your objectives. And there is no hand-holding. It's all free roam, completely free from the beginning to the end of the level. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, old games were grueling, but that's kind of important, too. You kind of have to learn from that and then improve on this. Mm -hmm. Like, all those games that uh, independents are making right now, including Underworld's Cello... All of those are derived from all the experiences we had, and we take the best of what we like and we try to share it with the others. I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, true. Mm-hmm. that's why. That's why Braid was such a huge successful, uh, successful game. Yeah, like, it's just uh, such a shame that the creator was such a pretentious. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm done. That's a pro- that, Yeah, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Although you know what, I'm glad I remember Braid because the, the guy who created it, he's doing another game called The Witness, which is a spiritual successor to Myst, another point-and-click game. Mm-hmm. It was meant to be released in 2011, but it, it, I haven't heard anything of it. And I don't know if it's still going or not, but it looked really, really slick and really interesting. So, Hero, I got a question here for Underworld Stello. I noticed that you are a big fan of the whole traditional type of difficulty where if somebody dies, you bring them back to the beginning and learn from your mistakes. So will Underworld Shadow have that kind of difficulty level or will it be a, a safe point here or you can save at a certain spot kind of deal? There, there are there seems yeah. to be safe points. When you first start, one, once the adventure really starts, you, you're given the choice to just keep going or save the game so that you don't have to go through the intro again. Oh, okay. Of course, I mean, it's the demo, so you don't have that many save points, but it, it's like uh, the first three Resident Evils where you had that safe room and a typewriter mm-hmm. to save your game. Mm-hmm. You can't yeah. save anywhere else but there. Oh, okay. Oh, God, yeah. that, safe, that safe system with the, the stupid ink ribbons. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Depending no, no, on the no, difficulty no you played, so, you could have infinity in, uh, ink ribbons at that time. I, I know I have uh, Resident Evil 3 on a Dreamcast, and unless I play on a very hard setting, at least, I, I won't need any ribbons. <laughs> So not that, uh, not on the not on the GameCube version not on the GameCube remake of Resident Evil One okay. where there were like thirty ink ribbons in the entire game regardless <laughs> of difficulty level. <laughs> Ouch! I know, right? It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> but Hiro, you were saying he is totally right in the fact that there is a save point in there in the game that is just set in the house isn't very big. There's only a uh, one place where it is safe from any and all danger, which is. The study, which mm. uh, resets the fear meter, it allows you to store all your inventory, it allows you to save your game, stuff like that. But it shouldn't mean that you should feel comfortable in the <laughs> game, because when you do find uh, the um, when you do find the study room, the time where you um, the how much time you have before your uh, fear meter goes up drops dramatically don't worry it's only going to go down to like 15 minutes <laughs> it's in my head right now because i think to myself if they have a place where they can go to in order to reset their fear meter they're probably going to go to one room reset it another room reset it i can i can see the players doing that mm-hmm. right now yeah, you know fine. um there is, I, 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 uh, yes, I have a chance to bring this video game to the, to the, to, to the conversation because it's my favorite horror game ever made. Uh, there was a video game called Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem oh, for the GameCube. Oh, damn. Which oh, I is, love that one. uh, yeah, it's a great horror game produced by Silicon Knights mm-hmm. and made by the guys who did the remake of Metal Gear Solid also mm-hmm. for the GameCube. It had a system which is very similar to the system you have where, uh, characters will go insane. And as they go insane, the game starts, uh, like messing up with the player. Like it's, I it resets, that. it, it goes to the intro sequence or <laughs> it gives you a blue screen of death, things like that. Wow. Yeah. There was a way within the video game 
to uh, for the character to regain sanity. So they will have like a crucifix and they will they will pray to it, or they will have a flask of uh, liquor and or alcohol and they will take a take a swig and the thing, or they will read a book, or they will uh, use a magic spell to recover sanity with uh, with a magic uh, with a magic spell. So I was wondering, besides uh, using the rooms, you kind of you could use something similar to that, like uh, I don't know, I that you could pull that. out. Oh, I, what happened I then? Did, I, I did try that. I tried having, um, uh, vi- talking to vinyl lower it. I've had, I've, I tried having a, a, trying to make a closet with a flask of wine to allow you to, uh, take a sip of it and relax. I, I tried <laughs> that, but it's nothing a little more fine tuning in the programming won't fix, but I had a little trouble with, uh, having the, uh, sanity meter. Uh, comply with this fact. Mm. Whenever I had it on zero and I used one of those items to help give her relief, it found the total to be negative one. And I thought to myself, oh, that would just stockpile. That would just become a problem. So it's more of uh, the the gameplay elements not working together and cooperating rather than you not been thinking about this uh, addition before. It had been miscooperation, and the more I keep thinking about it, the more I keep thinking, yeah, the uh, fear meter was great for the beginning of the game where the tension was on you that you had to make some decisions before you go insane, before going into the study. But once you get into the study... I keep thinking to myself, things are going to get a lot easier. Mm. And I thought to myself, maybe if there's something else I can do to add to the tension. Like I said before, the house isn't very big, so maybe you would take a few minutes to uh, explore the house a little bit more and make small steps in progression with uh, the study being your main hub. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just just thought maybe that would be a better choice, but other than that, I don't know. (laughs) I have to comment that it's really nice to have items uh, like the urn where you click on it and the ghost comes screaming at you and then your fear meter goes all the way up. That that, that part was genius, actually. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming either. <laughs> it said it was an urn of ashes. I thought maybe it would be something like, oh, well, you don't want to mess with that. But <laughs> apparently people do, and they pay for it. Oh, yeah, I, I broke the urn, too, and it went up a notch. You know, it's it's like in Kung Fu Panda, when Pa is fiddling yeah. around with Ooh. the urn, and then, yeah. <laughs> Every time he touches it, there's this, just cute. But you could go still the um, Prince of Persia way, where you have a timer, and you can you have to do it by that timer or you know if the fear meter or sanity meter itself is on the timer uh only past a certain point in the game can can you start using some items or find those items that way your counter would never go into negative and cause some problems because i do know that the original prince of persia you had one hour to finish it one hour and that's it you had no reprieve nothing just start to finish one hour and uh I would have loved to have some kind of uh, an hourglass at some point to just try or, you know, a secret giving me five extra minutes. That would have been super dandy. But if you know that, say, you get to the second floor uh, by the 20 minutes mark, well, then you already know that if you have uh, a flask of wine or a little extra fear reliever with you, well, you don't have to make the counter go all the way down. Mm-hmm. It's just a suggestion again. Mm. I, I'll 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 try and iron this out with uh, with uh, Aaron and see what he thinks. But yeah, I will take these suggestions into consideration. Okay, cool. Because I think Aaron will listen to this episode and he'll give us feedback. Like I said, I, I played a bit and I got confused because I'm not this generation of games. Like I don't play this. Uh, I feel so young. <laughs> I feel so young and dumb. But uh, we feel old and crotchety, so don't worry. <laughs> How long do you think the game would last in terms of time? Like, is it a time-based game where it's only... Depends on the player. Ah, so there's no timer, like, this game can only be completed in two, two hours or something like that. Oh, okay. oh, oh, I have another I have another question. I have another question. Mm-hmm. Um, these keep coming up. Okay, so we saw Octavia taking a knife to the face. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how graphic are you and how far are you going to go with the dead scenes? Um, there's a reason why the um, zombie head's neck is this green color. Um, 
I, I'm kind of squeamish on what to think about putting blood in the game because I think to myself, there's a lot of My Little Pony fans that would hang me up to dry <laughs> if they found blood anywhere near their cute, colorful, pastel ponies. So um, I kind of, I'm kind of trying to put myself in the gray area mm. and trying to at least put some semblances of death in there, mm. but hardly any blood. So you know, that's a, that's a good position to take. This fandom is very bipolar when it comes to grim dark. <laughs> Uh, yeah. like, no, no, we like Green Dark. Oh, love, we love the, the, the darkness and the mm-hmm. fall of Equestria. Like, <laughs> j- j- go, go, little peep on their asses. Mm-hmm. And then, how dare you write cupcakes? Oh, yeah, you, so, you don't yeah, need this the gore and the people. blood to scare the people. You, you, you yeah. already have something very psychological there, and keep going with it. Don't go the gore way. That's mm-hmm. possibly the, yeah. the worst possible way. Some will well, like I, it, but I know that personally, it won't work as well. Mm-hmm. What Lion yeah, is I, saying I, is I absolutely true. I agree with you, and true. I do plan to go that route. Yeah. I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm yeah. going... If, if in you, terms of being graphic, I'm only going to use the uh, text to do uh, so, but in terms of showing it, I'm not going to show much. So if you, if you look back to the original uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, oh. there is no blood in the entire movie. <laughs> Everything is suggested with sound effects and camera angles. Mm. And it's still one of the most disturbing horror movies ever made. And there is not a drop of blood in it. There is more. There is more blood in Poltergeist uh, than yeah. in, in than in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which also Poltergeist is really disturbing and a really really well done horror movie. So yeah, I I agree with you on that. That uh, and the part that you refer to the text is when the when the timber wolf attacks. That you say you're going yes. to do something similar. Yeah. To yeah. yeah. Not only that, but the head and the knife and whatnot. So, you know, I will really... put in description. I will put in descriptive, uh, you know, um, uh, deaths in there. But when That'll it comes sure. to showing, it it won't show much. Okay. Yeah. Actually, By yeah, the way, like... that part with the that part with the timber wolf's head. <laughs> that one, the timber wolf, like when it attacks. Holy crap! Yeah, that I, was, was I was quite proud of that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was you, good. You that was really good. Actually, I, uh, I, I've like played this game um, as like uh, streaming for for uh, to show to one one fellow, and he was actually quite um, quite scared. He said he commented that he would not play the game on his own, and when he saw the <laughs> zombies' head, he was really like afraid to proceed. What would what would go on? <laughs> so I think for yeah. extra life, right? Yeah, during the extra mm. life, during your break, Norman. So what happened was, um, I think you really nailed down the shock factor in the in the graphic and in the description. It really Without has got... showing a drop of blood. This yes. is what I'm shooting for. Yes, it's well, good, good, good on that. Hope to see more of that. <laughs> well, or oh, see less of it. <laughs> <laughs> see less and uh, read. Less. <laughs> a light for murder. Oh, it's just spaghetti sauce. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, it's, it's ketchup. Like white, so they used ink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still, oh, uh, I I can't wait to play the full version of this game because let's just say if the game comes out live and everybody's getting it, I I want to stream me playing it. And you know what, Hero, oh. I I'm inviting you on just to. Say stuff about the game. <laughs> Are you gonna do a reaction? <laughs> a play to play like a commenter. Oh, he's yeah. going for the goal. I, I he's reaching for the key. That. Oh my god, he's dying! <laughs> was I like, really wouldn't mind that. I find that to be fun. I, I've been. I've, I wanted to do that with uh, White Hawk Ponch when he was doing my uh, ROMs, but I didn't ask. Huh? Here's the thing um, when the game's out, why don't you come back on and do a premiere party with us? Talk, talk it up. Um, invite people on maybe I don't know you know it's going to be what a year away so yeah planning (laughs) sure but it's going to be interesting it's going to be interesting because I can tell if the game has quality or not and your game here Cello it has quality I I can see that you put a lot of love into it I I try to I I try to put a lot of love into this and I hope that I, I really can just complete this throughout if it did if it didn't for any reason whatsoever it would be a grave and dire shame mm-hmm. you know, on me there is going to be rough patches there's going to be rough times and moments when you are like 
you just want to give up and throw everything away, you have to learn how to silence those moments or just go through them so you can continue stronger than ever and finishing it. Because every video game, every good video game, every good comic picture, uh, audio drama, podcast, animation, whatever, they have rough times. Like, there is not one that says, oh, it's, well, it was a very smooth ride. Bull- That's not a word. Mm-hmm. Bull- That's not a word. Everybody My has flank. problems when produ- <laughs> Yeah, everybody has problems when producing something. Oh, yeah. And if, if, if you right. do, if you hit a rough, a rough patch, you can take a break. You can come to us, to any of us. You can talk to us about it, and then you have to come back and keep fighting until the, the game gets finished, and it's going to be awesome, and people are going to love it. Mm-hmm. I can already tell you that. They, 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 they are going to root for you to, to finish it. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. People already are, and I really don't want to let them down, so I won't. I promise you, You're not I, going I to. won't. That's awesome. You're not going to. We, we will be ready to sing you the success song at the end of the <laughs> two-parter that premieres season three. Oh, success. <laughs> and, and seriously, I, I think a lot of people are hyped for this because it's something different. And it's, well, judging from the comments on EQD, they have a lot to say about it. <laughs> they do have a lot to say about it. And I'm listening to every single one to see if they have, you know, an idea or a suggestion. And I take each one. There, there, there is not a suggestion I haven't read. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That also says, says a lot about you. That's good. Humble. That you read opinions and you take people's co- comments and criticisms into account. That's very good. Well, after seeing Creators of Braid and Fez, you know, you've got to realize something when, you, when it comes to working in independent games. Mm-hmm. You need to connect with your audience. You need to work with them instead of working to... Uh, just make a game of your own creation and of no one else's. Oh, this you, uh, that is true. And that's something that I'm pretty sure most video game companies today, <laughs> uh, EA especially, uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, correct, uh, have been losing for mm. quite some time. So I, I feel that this is the best way to do it. True, true. And also, I, I think you need to get yourself out there and personality-wise because... If you guys know Mighty Number no. Nine, the creator, that, uh, the creator of Mega Man, he started that game, and the game was funded by the fans. Oh yeah, yeah, it got oh, yeah. like one million dollars in uh, one day. No, uh, one two, mi- million. Two, two million. Oh, two wait, million. No. Yes, oh, wait, two million. Yes, one million on one day. You're right. Oh my. Yeah, but one it, million but it something two in one million. day. He reached two million one week. Um, no, yeah. he, uh, no. I was saying he reached over two million at the end of oh, at no, the no. end of the Kickstarter. Uh, it's four million. Oh, oh, okay. I funded it. It was my fault. But then again, that's Keiji Nafune. He's been working on video games since video games are video games. Yeah. And sure. How are you not going to fund this person? It's like, first of all, how are you not funding this person? And second, why won't you? He's the guy who created Mega Man. Mm-hmm. If he's the guy not who created one of... your childhood. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's the guy who, who created one of the icons of the 8-bit video games. Mm-hmm. The, bid- the video games that, thanks to them, we have all the video games that we have right now. If it hadn't been for the 8-bits, you know, Nintendo and Master System, we wouldn't have video games right now. Oh, Nintendo true, true. Pulled, pulled the video game industry out of the... The crash that the Atari 2600 caused. Yeah. Well, you, you know what, Hero? I, I hope that by making this game Underworld's Cello, any success from this game follows through to your next project. Mm-mm. Thank yes. you. One step further. Good luck, man. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. So, from what I can see, it's going to be difficult. So, is there going to be an easy mode on? Yes, there is uh, definitely going to be a, a, a sort of easy mode. There was a person on a, on a YouTube who um, commented that he wanted the option to save anywhere instead of in one place. And I figured that would be the best thing to do because there are people who like it hardcore and people that don't. I want it easy because I, I don't know how to play this kind of game. If there's like um, a hand-holding segment, I, I, I want it. <laughs> But, you know, you don't have to listen to me because, I, I, like I said, I don't play this game, so... Uh. Well, it's for the people like you who don't play the adventure gaming genre, and I know that most adventure games definitely have the option where you can save anywhere, so if I were to 
take it off and limit the place where you would save, uh, I'm sure there would be some uh, concerns. So I would basically just put that in there, see if that would uh, satisfy them. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I- I'll try it out. And, well, um, I since I have your Skype, I'll just message you and say, yeah, this is a bit difficult. I want it easy. <laughs> uh, I'll just snack to <laughs> you. my uh, hand. Yeah, I'll, I'll just snack to you. Or even... <laughs> Even better, I'll just message you. How do I solve this puzzle? It's in World One of One. <laughs> Pull it <with> my finger. <laughs> wow, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, I I wish you all the success, and I can't wait to play it, man. Because I consider myself as a gamer, and I don't know playing this game. So uh, first thing I'm doing, I'm gonna try to play this game. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and hopefully a Halloween 2014 release if all goes well yep, yep, yep. I hope it does I really hope it, it will. does so before the game release do you plan on releasing another demo? maybe mm. maybe a, a demo that probably leaves off where you um, left off in the house mm. in the uh, study but after that I don't think there would be um, any more demo releases until the official one mm, so... but we'll see uh, even that, even that demo is kind of on the table, but I don't know if I should touch it or not. Oh, okay, so this one will include the voices and voice acting and stuff. I do want to release some videos on YouTube uh, demonstrating the actresses and actors and their voice talents in the game. Mm, okay. That I at least want to do. So I, I've been thinking because uh, since the game is out and there's a lot of people that touch it. Do you do you got any feedback saying this game this part here is broken or this part here didn't work and stuff? All the time, I, and I thank them every time they find a bug for me to fix. I when I put this on 4chan, they were really good about critiquing and saying, "Hey, here's here's a bug or here's a, a little grammatical error you need to fix or this shouldn't be here and whatnot." The reason I released a mm-hmm. a I updated demo in the first place was because the first demo that was released before the video uh, was brought out uh, to its release was so buggy, especially with the candle and the fact that the uh, key took up an additional space after it was gone. It just needed some more fine tuning. And if anyone's listening to me uh, about this and you're still playing the demo, Please, for the love of God, nitpick all you want until all the little nits are sufficiently picked. Because okay. <laughs> I depend on you to help me out. Playtesting is magic. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> no, you see, that's that's a very good thing to do. Uh, people usually regard Fortune as the mighty evil of the internet. Oh, yes. That usually happens... But it's also a very good place to go get critiques about it. Uh, when Lauren Faust considers it a good place to go get critiqued, <laughs> she did, she went on record saying that, you can consider it a good place to get, uh, to get reviews of what you have. Because for some reason, the anonymity in that place makes it for good, re- good reviews. And with good reviews, I mean good constructive hey, this part of your game is broken, fix it already, <laughs> uh, kind of reviews. Instead of, yeah, instead of saying, oh my god, this is useless, you should give up, they say, oh my god, this is terrible, this is how you do to make it better. Mm. But that's, that's good. That's how yeah. the video game industry should be, instead of being, oh, this video game is perfect, 10 out of 10, I only played the demo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. GameSpot, GameSpot, Jeff Valve did it quite well with their lots and lots of beta testing and play testing. I remember read, uh, listening to their commentary on Left 4 Dead and uh, how how the game grew from a simple concept. Uh, after all the play testing and the fan input, it became one of the like funnest zombie killing games out there today, oh, up to this day. It's true. I I played mm. 25 hours for <laughs> charity and that game was fun. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Kitsu, for the Molotov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Fire everywhere. Yep. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I think those are all the questions we had for Hero, right? right. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. I definitely ran out of questions. Now for real, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's cool. So anyway, if we don't have any questions, we can move on to the next topic. And Hero, thank you for coming on and thank you for sharing your story with us because I learned a lot and your artwork, it's really, really impressive. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much for everything. Oh, no problem, man. So where can they find you? Where can they get in touch with you? You can get in touch with me, and again, I'll, I'll say this again, you can get in touch with me with all lowercase, all one word, mariobud at gmail.com, or if you want to, you can find my YouTube channel, which you know you can find by searching Hero of Time 1000 in the YouTube. And any place else, like DeviantArt maybe? DeviantArt is also Hero of Time 1000. Just basically put in Hero of Time 1000 and see what you find <laughs> in Google. <laughs> Okay, I'll add it into the show notes. The one that I can think of, because if I just put everything, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so, okay, that's cool. So, anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout-outs. So, my first shout-out goes to you, Hero. Thank you for coming on to the show and sharing your experience again. Thank you. I can't wait for the game to come out, because... Uh, how do I put this one? It's going to be big... I, I can't wait for it to come out either. I just can't. Let's just hope you don't forget the little people. <laughs> oh, it's the little people who are going to make me. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm never going to forget about them. Yeah, especially <laughs> this show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you, Hero. And my second shout-out goes to you, James. Thank you for being on and backing me up. No problem, man. Always there. Always there for anything you need. And this goes for you as well, Hero. If you need anything or if you want to talk with anybody, I, uh, you, I'm here for I'm here for you. Thank you. You're welcome, my friend. And to you too, Lion. Thanks for backing me up because I am useless <laughs> with this kind of genre of gaming. You're most welcome. James did a lot of the work, though. Oh, no problem, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, thank you, James. <laughs> yes, James. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you, Charlie. Uh, thank you for getting this awesome guest. Oh, you're welcome, Norman. No worries. <laughs> and saying all the thank yous. What about you, Charlie? Any thank yous to give about too? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd like to thank um, my um, the, the current guest, um, Hero of Time 1000. I'd like to thank my co-host, Norman, Hen- Norman Zenzo, James, and also uh, Lionheart Studio. And my shout-out goes to um, Hitsune uh, for actually introducing to me Adventure Game Studio, which I had at that point had no idea what it was. <laughs> uh, and also a shout-out to all people who play point and play Adventure Games. Uh, keep the nostalgia going and keep the genre alive. You're awesome. Yep, yep. And Lion, Lion Heart Studios, wow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not really. Really, what? <laughs> Uh, if you listen to what he said, you know, this is the playback. It's going to be funny. <laughs> okay, I, I'm also a bit derpy. It's like 1.30 a.m. Oh, uh, you, you, cannot, you cannot order me. <laughs> but anyway, um, James, shout out. Uh, well, I... Besides giving a shout out to every single one of you who's here right now for uh, bringing, me, bringing me in and making me have a great time uh, with this uh, podcast, which is brilliant. I want to give a shout out to my good friend Fernin, uh, who is doing two, video, two comic projects at, at this moment. He's the screenwriter of a superhero comic series and a Wild West comic series that I'm doing with him. And you can check it out at uh, fernindt.tumblr.com. It's a really good series and definitely worth but worth your time. And it's not just because I am the one drawing it. <laughs> okay. So what about you, Lion? Mainly to all of the fandom that manages to keep all of those wonderful things being done and keep us in line when we feel we're going out of way. <laughs> Everything in there is so worth it. Thank you very much, all the fans in there. Yep, yep, indeed. And what about you, Hero? Any shout-outs to give out to? I just want to give out a shout-out to my family and my friends and mostly Christina for just being there for me and all the people who decide to play my game and enjoy it. Oh, <laughs> Thank you so much. You, you, you deserve all the love, man, because it's... Well, I'm repeating myself. Oh, God. Uh, it's a good game. Go play the demo. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Mm-mm. No, no, it, 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 don't worry. No, you are not. You are not no, so. Norman, when did you change your name to GameSpot? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we, with that, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. If you would like to email me personally, you can reach me at norman at com. Daniel at mbshow.com and charlie at mbshow.com and twitters we have the twitters you can reach the show's account at the mbshow.com <laughs> I'm derpy sorry um, at the mbshow and 
Well, you can communicate with Sweetie Bot. She will post tweets about the show, editing the show, and also stuff about the show. And you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I will tweet out pictures of food, toys, and kitties. And you can also reach Dan at Sink Pinky. That's S T P I N K E. Tweet him to feel better about yourself. <laughs> and what about you, Doctor? Yeah, you can reach me at the RCXY if you wished in on the Twitters. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. And James? Oh, you can check me out in uh, James Cork uh, at James Cork on Twitter. You can check my DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com, and you can follow my Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. All righty then. And Lion, what about you? Well, you can reach me on Divine Art at Lionheart Cartoon. .divineart.com but before you do that just be sure to check out Hero of Time 1000 before that his stuff is really worth it as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. MSP yo MSP yes, MS yeah. okay. yeah, that's that's one of the things I'm taking out of this MS Paint holy crap <laughs> it's awesome stuff yeah. it's it's the one program that everybody uses just to do silly things with it you create art with it wow mm-hmm. awesome and- what about you, Hero? Do you have Twitter? No, I don't have Twitter. Okay, no problem then. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also, like, our Facebook page. Uh, I have been Derpy Norman Sanzo. And I have been Derpy Charlie. <laughs> and I have been James Cork. I've been chained to the wall, Lionheart Cartoon. At Hero of Time 1000. And I'll try to be less Derpy next week with MS Paint. <laughs> See you guys. See you guys. In this crazy world of myths and lies It's hard to see the dreams we hide Up and down and down and up goes my mind Trying to erase the hands of time Seeing all these paths connecting ties Which then I realize You think I should stop, wait and whoa But you don't Which only your eyes can see These wings that give me the means to fly Make me want to touch the sky But as far and as fast I soar so high Stop and just ask why About the line of reality you drew But you always knew that inside of me There's this Let's now we're talking about nostalgia and stuff. It's all sorry. How do I want to segue out of this?
God dang it. Um, <laughs> three, two, one. If you put this, if you put the hat on the zombie head, it should start playing the music of Thriller. <laughs> oh my gosh! Or, or at least some facsimile of Thriller. No, it's like you put the head, on the, the hat on the zombie head, and it goes. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> but then it would drop the key. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Another way to solve the puzzle. Okay, cool. Because I think Aaron will listen to this episode and oh, he'll give it, us it, feedback. You have to dig yourself out. Ah, never mind. <laughs> you, you know what? Hiro, Hiro said it, and uh, Hiro said it. I got you. Uh, oh, oh. As long as you don't, uh, as long as you don't acknowledge it, it will pass away. It will pass away. So, so anyway, <laughs> look away. It'll disappear. <laughs> yes, look away. Don't look at me. If I don't see it, it won't see me. <laughs> That's my cat's prerogative. 